Yay Media Group. Hey y'all, welcome to my draw. What? This is life. My name is Heather. I got some more to be. Maybe my name is Brenda. And we're talking about an area that I think we're both pretty passionate about. Marriage. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. We are very, very much so. Very much so. Today's title of this episode, can you believe it? We are. We actually have a title to the episode. It's called Choose Your Heart. And he came up with it. I, like, I was so proud. The first time in like, like eight years. I was shocker. So proud. I'm so so proud. <laughs> Good job, babe. Choose your heart. Choose your heart. And the basis of this is uh, fairly simple. Um, you can either get divorced and that can be hard or you can... Stay with somebody, and that can be hard. So choose your heart. Thank and you so much for joining we're us. We're done for one minute ep- oh. in. No, we're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us for another. No. No, but, but I mean, you want to you want to you want to kick it off with what you were talking about uh, before we get on air? Yeah, I, I think we should put it out there that marriage can be hard. I think we put that out there a lot. We do. People are probably sick of us. Like. I don't even want to get married after listening to your podcast. <laughs> well, hopefully we provide a sense of reality to it because I feel like yeah. I feel like a lot of people be jumping into this thing with with fairy tales and then y'all be watching them them uh them Hallmark. So, y'all be watching them Hallmark <laughs> movies and uh shout out to my boy uh John who uh who's Chris. Who's, oh, Chris. <laughs> shout out to my boy Chris. He does uh, all who the Hallmark, is, Hallmark who movies. Who is in the Hallmark movies? Uh, but um. <laughs> I mean, even even that kind of stuff. Like he's a he's he's one of like the fixture uh, actors and great guy, uh, amazing family. His kids yeah, are his, like so. His kids are incredible, amazing. But yeah. anyways, going back to it, y'all be watching them Hallmark movies, and then y'all be looking at them. He's talking uh, about women. He's talking about women. Go ahead. Men don't watch <laughs> men. Do men watch Hallmark movies? Okay. Um. No, not really. Not that I know of. I yeah, think it's I'm, more of like never, a woman. I never, I never yeah, I think it's more of like a movie. woman thing. But it goes back to Ro and Tay and Logan. What do you mean? Taylor comes home every day with the tea. Oh, God. She talks about the crushes that are going on in her class. Who has a crush on who? Hey, Logan, how's your day? Good. You got any tea? Anything happen at school today? Any drama? Nope. It's like, what? No, and then you find out later there was drama, but he's like, I just wasn't involved in it. And it's just like, what? That's it. And then meanwhile, Taylor is trying to be a matchmaker in fourth grade with Roman, who is in first grade. Roman has no interest. He's like, no. And she's like, a kindergartner came up to me and told me to introduce her to you. And Roman is like, I'm not interested. He's like, mom is my girlfriend. How cute is that? I was so happy to hear that. Okay. But <laughs> okay, <it's> spooky. But, <laughs> that's my baby. But I feel like at a young age, women are, live in this fantasy world. And then we grow up and we're still in this fantasy world and it just doesn't go away. So then you get married and you have all these high expectations of what, what you want your spouse to do. And you're focusing all your energy on changing this person and wanting this man to be this picture of a father who was there or wasn't there. You have all these ideas, right? And then one day you realize it doesn't work. For some of you, you might be able to change your man temporarily, but deep down he's just miserable, right? Um, but some buck against the system because they don't want to be changed. No, it's, no, 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 no. Correction. It is not that is not that they don't want to be changed. They don't want to be changed by me or by no, you. No, 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 no. There's another C word. There's another C word. They don't that want to be to controlled. There. They don't want to be controlled. That's correct. That's correct. And anytime, anytime you seek to control somebody else, you can you can always expect rebellion. That's and but even even God shows us this in that He does not seek to control us. Yeah. He provides us with free will. I mean, one yeah. of the greatest gifts that he gave to Adam in the garden was the gift of free will. Outside of the gift of life, he gave the gift of free will. Yeah. In fact, he will love you so much that he will love you all the way to your own destruction. That's like real. he will allow for you to self-destruct even though he loves and he cares for you because he doesn't desire for you to. The problem is that people yeah. oftentimes get into relationships and then they desire to control the other person. 
because yeah. they want that other person to change. So we seek to control. That's the reason why a lot of, you know, church culture nowadays is about behavior modification because it's essentially about control, which they believe that control could help to lead towards change. Well, I don't believe that people, or I'll just say women because I'm a woman, women want to change them, change a man because of control. We, a woman wants to change a man so she can feel safe. <laughs> Is that not accurate, Riley? Okay. Okay. No, hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. A woman's intent is not to like, oh, I'm trying to control you. It's like, no, I'm just trying to create an atmosphere that feels safe for me. Right? I'm not saying it's right, baby. Hear me out. I'm not saying it's right. But what I'm saying is a woman's intent is not to control your life. Her intent is I'm I'm trying to feel safe because of my trauma, because of what I have going on. So if I, for example, a man's going out late at night, right? He's hanging out with his buddies, whatever the case is. You're getting all these phone calls. Come home, come home. Man, my wife trying to control me. Nope. She just wants you home because her dad stepped out on her mom and was gone all the time as a child. So she saw dad coming home late every night. So in her head, she thinks if you're home, <laughs> then I'll feel safe. Is that not right, Riley? Oh yes, that, I would say that's correct. Oh yes, <laughs> We're in charge of our own healing, right? Of course. But there, we will tell you things, not to control you, like Heather said, but because it'll help us feel better help us be more happier in, in the relationship, help us treat you better. <laughs> it's to help us. Yeah. It's not to control you. It has nothing no. to do with you. That's control, guys. <laughs> oh, I, I, hate to, I, I hate to break this to both of you, but that's control. Okay, let's go. Let's go back to your example. You just concocted an entire uh, movie in your head. That's a woman, though. That's based what we do. On, based on past <laughs> trauma yes. that you have to deal with. 100%. That's where interdependence and codependence yeah, come from. That's accurate. And sadly, too many people are in relationships right now who are interdependent because you are requiring for your... Or codependent. I mean, codependent. Yeah. Where you are requiring for your partner, for your spouse, wherever that person is to somehow make you feel safe when safety is your job. I'm in charge of my healing, but I could say, cause we could say the same thing about y'all. Y'all are out late. Now it's something to be like, Hey, just wanted to make sure I know where you are yeah. because I, because I want to, I want to know. That would be you at. all day. You'd be stressed. But you, but, but if, but if you, if you let me know you're out with your girl, totally. or something like that, you hey, wouldn't care. you're good. Yeah. I'm going to sleep. Yeah. You have a good yeah, time because be why? Because you grown. Yeah. And if we weren't together, you'd be out with your girls. I mean, you know, it's yeah. like, it, it, yeah. but you're grown. I'm not, I'm not dependent on me knowing like, well, what is she doing right now? Yeah, bitch, she's talking to somebody else. Bitch, she's doing somebody else. Like, that's an issue I got to deal with internally. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yes. I, and I think sometimes in so a relationship. So you admit that, that what, that what y'all talking about <laughs> is control. Because <laughs> that's control. Okay. I think our I think our end goal is different in a woman's head to a man, a man to a woman's head. Our our end goal is different. Our end goal is safety. In your head, you think that you're being tied up, and in our head, we're like, no, we're just <laughs> looking for safety. But listen, hear me out. I'm I listening. do agree that you cannot put your happiness in the hands of your spouse because you will end up miserable. Or your healing. Or your healing in the hands of your spouse. Or your peace. Your peace, your joy, anything. You can't You can't put your hope in a human. That reminds me of um, Isaiah 2 and 22. Don't put your trust in humans, for they are as frail as breath. So granted, you can't put your hope in them. But you know what that also means? If you're not putting your happiness in the hands of your spouse, right? But your spouse is hanging out late. Your, your spouse is turning up. Your spouse is getting drunk every night. They're cheating on you. They're lying. They're doing all these things. Because your hope and happiness is not dependent on the, your relationship. You can walk away and truly love yourself and say, I love myself. My happiness is not determined in this relationship, but I'm going to love myself to walk out the door because unfortunately this is not a safe place for me. And that is, that is absolutely yeah. accurate. That is 100%. absolutely accurate. And kudos. <laughs> That's absolutely accurate. Yeah. However, however, staying in a relationship and then requiring for this yeah. other person 
to somehow provide you with this sense of safety, provide or you with this sense of validation, yeah. provide you this yeah. sense of healing. You don't tell me I look pretty enough. Or you don't tell me I do this enough. You don't tell me I, I act like you don't. You don't tell me this enough. The, the, and, and, and there's no point where this where your person is going to constantly satisfy you yeah, the way you true. think you want to be satisfied. That's true. So at that point, you just have to realize. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you what you got to realize. I'm gonna tell you right after this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you know me, you know I'm really serious about budgets and our finances, aren't I? Yeah. I can be a little crazy about it. But yeah. listen, I feel like we've all come to this point, especially with inflation and everything that's going on. It's time for you to take control of your money and mm -hmm. have a checking account that will actually have your back. And this is why we love Chime and checking. There's features like there's no maintenance fees. There's no $12 fee that's going to hit your account every month. There's a fee-free overdraft up to $200. And you can get paid up to two days early with direct deposit. Let's go. You can learn more about it at chime.com backslash L W T L. So chime helps you make progress with fee free overdraft up to $200. Mm -hmm. You get spotted on debit card purchases and cash withdrawals. No monthly fees or maintenance fees over 50,000 fee free ATMs. Let's go. Um, eligible members get complimentary boost to temporarily increase a friend's spot me limit. When you give a boost, they can boost you back to temporarily raise your limit. You set up a direct deposit in your Chime account. After qualifying direct deposit of $200 plus, Chime will notify you to enroll in spot me with an activated debit card. Chime will spot you up to $200 when you exceed your balance. Your next direct deposit is applied to your negative balance. Chime never charges fees or interest for using spot me. So make fall finances a little greener by working towards your financial goals with Chime. Open your account in two minutes at Chime.com backslash LWTL. That's Chime.com backslash LWTL. Chime feels like progress. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bank Corp NA or Stride Bank NA members FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Boosts are available to eligible Chime members enrolled in Spot Me and are subject to monthly limits. Terms and conditions apply. Go to chime.com backslash disclosures for details. This is getting well, good. We're back. So at this point, you got to realize that you are, in fact, codependent. Yeah. And you have to take responsibility for your own healing. You yeah. have to take responsibility for your own journey you have yeah. to stop putting it on other people. And that's why I think that a lot of uh, a lot of the teaching nowadays that's surrounded around relationship and, and marriage, unfortunately, is codependency based. A yeah. lot of it is. It is well, you get married. Oh, that's and you, all and, the Hall Hallmark movies. And your and your <laughs> spouse is I mean, you know, even the they things that are saying you every they better do night. these things they for you. They better do they better, this. Yeah. My, my spouse better make me feel better. My spouse better make me do this. My my spouse need to make me feel like I'm on top of the world. My spouse need to do this. So you go in, you go into this marriage assuming that your spouse is supposed to change your world and change your life. And the truth of the matter is that they're they're human. They're not. He's gonna get tired, she's gonna get tired. Yeah. And then at some point, like, you know, that's the reason I talk about behavior modification. Cause you can teach, okay, I take a little boy. I throw him in the church. I teach him how to dress like a man yeah. of God. Yeah, for sure. I teach him the scriptures. So now he's memorized the scriptures mm -hmm. like a man of God. I put him in a choir, teach him how to sing like a man of God. He knows all the Christian colloquialisms, all the Christian sayings. I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm walking the promises of God. I'm doing Won't everything. he do it? Won't he do it? He knows all that <laughs> bull crap. So he, he does that. He, he knows all that like a man of God or like a woman of God, whichever way. Yeah. After a certain period of time, you wonder, well, what happened to the little boy? Yeah. Because now this man, he ain't acting like that anymore. Yeah. Because at some point, a lion, I don't care how much hay you feed it, when yeah. you walk inside of his cage, he's going to eat you. Because at his core, he is still coniferous. And, you know, I think a lot of this is like God desires something so deep in us that he wants to, he really wants to, wants to deal with roots, but we, we're so busy dealing on, dealing with flowers and dealing with behavior modification dealing that we're fruit. not, we're not really yeah. dealing with the healing part that needs to come from it. Yeah. So, you know, you, you get into this marriage and you say, well, these are all the things that I need. Cause we talk about those here, all the things oh, yeah. I need in order to be happy. Yeah. 
And we think it's okay. The problem that is... That list. My list. man need to do this. My woman need to do this. And if yeah. they don't do this, And then, if they don't do this, I'm done. I'm divorced and I'm done. I'm out of here. Deuces. Somebody else to do it for me. I'll be a thousand times happier in another with relationship. With somebody else. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and the issue is, is that now you're single, you're miserable because you think that somebody else is supposed to somehow come and sweep you off your feet because somebody lied to you and told you that you some doggone princess or some or some prince that deserves something that you actually do not. You need to get your own healing because you got trauma in your life that you need to deal with and you expecting for somebody else to come in and save the day. And I'm sorry, but your husband is not your daddy and your and your your wife is not your mama. You need to go heal for yourself. Ouch, that's real. Somebody no, somebody no, somebody real. asked me. I did a Q and A. Somebody asked me, said, what, as a single person, what is something that I should be doing right now to prepare myself for marriage? Heal. I said, heal. Heal, child. That's what you need to be doing. You need to be healing for Focus you. Focus on yourself. Focusing on you. Well, where do I go to meet somebody? Good people are everywhere. The problem is yeah. they don't want you because you're not healed. And then if they do take you, now you're just trauma bonding. Well, the thing is, when we're not healed, we attract people who are also not healed because it's that toxic side of us. And then when you go on a date with a really nice guy that has a secure attachment. Oh, you don't like him. Then you don't like him because he's boring. So then you go tell all enough. your girls, right, you're not toxic. Like, you're I need you nice. to snatch me up and throw me around a little bit. Where you get that from, baby girl? Where <laughs> yep. did you get that from? Because that daddy used to beat up her mama. That, but that's not healthy. And I feel like we start, we've been, we, we go towards the relationships um, based on our healing or not heal. You, you know what I mean? So... I think it's important that before you even think about getting into a relationship that you start to tackle that. And if you are married and you're listening to this and you're like, man, I'm trying to choose my heart. It's hard out here. Okay, maybe stop focusing on your spouse. I think that's a great first thing because we turn our family into our projects. How do I know? Because I'm a woman. I know these things. Oh, you, okay. I was about to say, when you say we, you mean, you mean women. Yeah, women. Right? Okay, okay. Yeah. I just wanted to now, make there's, sure. there's men that do it too, but really? I'm talking to women. Oh, yeah. I know I know some. Oh, yeah. okay. The well, women... Maybe, okay. The, the women Okay, well, y'all, y'all, y'all talk about. I don't know any on my side, but you give me I know men that try to turn their wife into a whole project. They really? want her to dress a certain way. Dang. If her nails are like, I need a fill, they'd be like, uh, uh-uh, uh, we can't go outside without a fill. You need to go. Really? Make, I made a nail appointment for you. Go up there. Did you work out today? Let me look. Let me look. Okay. Really? Oh yeah. Hey. You need to go. You need to get you a lymphatic massage. Like that? Yes, Jeez. I have some friends. Ugh. And their husbands are a little intense, but that's their situations, not mine. They didn't ask me for my advice. Um, but it's so important that you don't What focus. advice would you give them? Whew. My advice in that situation when there's one controlling person, um, the thing is she wasn't the one being controlling. He was. So it's very difficult for me to go speak to her about somebody else because she's in the situation. But I would encourage um, individual therapy mm -hmm. to work on their own codependency. Because um, if I go in and be like, no, no, tell him, that's not what we're doing. It just starts a whole argument, you know, because in his head, he's like, our marriage is a brand. You know what I mean? And we got to we have to brand. upkeep wow. this image. And, you know, our brand makes us a lot of money. And they do. They make a lot of boatload of money from their brand. But still, you know what I mean? So I would just need more information and I'd probably want you there to talk to the husband. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's, it's tough, but you can't make the person in your, that you're married to or dating or whatever your project. Like instead take all that energy that you have focusing on that person and put it on yourself. Okay. Let's get your life together. Why are you trying to control somebody else's life and your life ain't together? Like you're not together in your own life. So instead, take that energy and join a, a small group, right? Maybe it's your local church or maybe for codependency online or um, maybe you join a running club, right? Or maybe you join a boxing club. Just do something to get your mind off of being crazy within your marriage, right? And with your kids. Because like, it, it trickles down. Then you try to control your kids. Your kid, I'm telling you, your kid's going to rebel against you. Any, any, in any, any mammal, anything you try to keep in a cage, yeah, is going to find, is going to search for a way to get out. And yeah. once they finally get out of the cage, it's over. Yeah. It's like they're, they, they don't want to go back home. I was, I was watching something yesterday where a kid was like, you know, he was like, I don't care if it's in state, out of state, in another country. He said, just get me away from my mama. 
Yeah. And it's like, yeah. you know, it you don't That's you don't real. you don't want to have that controlling attitude over your kids like constantly over them. Like when it comes to we were just talking about this in the car. When it comes to when it comes to the kids, they was like, "Dad, what what is it? You, you know, should I make this decision?" My response is always the same. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? I mean, we could. I mean, what, what what are the pros and the cons? Logan, at this point, Logan's like, oh, here we go, pros and cons. Because at the end of the day, I'm my, my goal is to guide. My goal is yeah. not to control. Yeah. My goal is not is not to control because if I make every decision for them, then in my absence, they're going to always wonder. They're going to be they're not going to be confident enough to they're make decisions for themselves. Decisions. Which is yeah. why we most of us grown folks now can't make decisions for ourselves because all of our decisions mm -hmm. were made for us. That's true. I want him to be able to make his own decision. All my other kids make their own decisions. So I say, I want you to make a decision. Should I go to practice today? I mean, should you not? How do you feel? I feel fine. Well, I did. It, it, it sounds to me like you're okay. You should go. All right, I'm going to go. He goes, he gets on with practice. He gets in the car. I said, How was practice? He was like, I'm so glad I went. I said, that's yeah. a great decision you made, son. Yeah. He's like, yeah, it was. I'm really proud of myself. That right there, because it's yeah. not controlling. Yeah. And we want to control everybody, yeah. everything, God, and everything. We want to control our life and our marriage and our relationships and our friendships. And What's the boundaries there real quick? Y'all going to be I'm by not... yourselves for a long time, huh? What's the boundaries there? Because like yesterday we had a situation with Logan, and we had put $800 on his, it's called a one card. It's his little credit card at school for his food. There's a cafe and there's like a store. He spent $800 since school started. School started August 14th, guys. $800, okay? So what happened was I put $300 on, and then I put another $500 on a month ago. And it's gone. We got an email and I was shooketh because my expectation was that $500 would last through the end of the school year or at least December. Right. And so I was like, I called Logan and I wanted to go over the expenses with them to help, you know, to help me understand. Because like one day he spent fifty dollars on food. I was like, "Why are you spending fifty dollars on food?" You know, and I called you later to talk to, to talk it out with you, and you dealt perfectly with it. Tell him what you said. Yeah, I was just when I got in the car, we was talking about it in the car, and because I, I wanted to go back crazy, but go ahead. Yeah, we were talking about it in the car, <laughs> and I was like, "Hey, so, you know what? What are you buying?" He was like, "Oh, I buy vitamin water, and I buy this, and I buy that, and I buy I buy breakfast sandwich." And I was like, "Bro, I said you don't be drinking vitamin water. Like, we bought you a great canister. I mean, you you fill it up every day. It's full of ice water. Put some electrolytes in it, which is exactly what you need. You're an athlete now. You don't be drinking yeah. that crap." He's like, well, I buy it a zero sugar. I was like, but most of the time they put you know, super yeah. low, all this other kind of stuff yeah, in it. Yeah. I said, the ingredients in it, you don't need that stuff in your system, bro. I said, know what you're putting in it. You don't need that. So then that that knocks off that. I said, instead of, I said, you know, guys like us, we like to eat. I said, let's yeah. start packing our own snacks. So he'll go and, you know, buy a bag of chips to buy this or buy that. Chips for are $5. Yeah. $5 for you a know? small bag of chips. And it's, I mean, you know, the, the, the school, the school's getting in. The school, the school Chill. is, the school is, they doing their job. But, I was I was telling him I was like, bro, we we can we can go we can get our own stuff, and plus you're gonna get stuff you like, take it with you, you know. And then when when you get hungry, you want a snack, boom, you just take it out. But you take snacks you like, and he was like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But I feel like if I would have said that, he would have received it as well. I think I I think I think that I think that I think I built such a rapport with him that it doesn't come across. Sometimes when you when you when you deliver it, yeah. You put emotions with it, because I'd never tell him no, and I think that's the problem. No, I don't. I don't think so. Because I, I think, think I think so. I, I think I think I think sometimes when you deliver the message, you add the you add an that's emotional accurate. side There's to it. There's emotional side because I'm going over the budget and I'm like. But but still, I mean, even even with that, why are you spending fifty dollars on food? <laughs> and I think I so you can feel that. Yeah, you can but feel I that. Did you not can feel that in the conversation. Like that. Yeah, mine is just practical. Mine's yeah. like, bro, dude. For real? Yeah. Like, come on, man. I don't even buy that. Like, come yeah. on, bro. Like, get yeah. a day. Like, I, I make my own food. So, like, for yeah. me, it's practical and it's also fun. Where I'm like, and then he was like, you right. He was like, yeah, I don't really want that. And I'm like, yeah, you probably didn't finish your vitamin water. He's like, sometimes I can't because, you know, I got to drink it real fast. So I have to just throw it away. And I'm like, bro, you throwing money in the trash. I know, see what you, like, you would feel that. But like me, but here's the thing. Here's the thing with him. Until, until you teach them, they don't know. Yeah. No, that's true. That is very true. And I can't expect for him to know or to think like we do. You know what I mean? I think the other thing is he comes to me to ask about money every single day and he doesn't go to you. Yeah, because he know I'm, I, I, 
You say ask your mama or you say no. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because right. I feel like he doesn't need it. He doesn't. But he asked me a hundred times a day for a hundred things. Like I looked and I, he he's up like nine hundred eighty eight dollars on the month of things that he's bought. I'm like, what? Like, that's a lot for 11 year old. You know what I mean? It's so like. I don't know nothing about it. <laughs> so my emotion is that I'm looking at the numbers. You and know I think, what I mean? I think, I think it's healthy sometimes. You'd be like. Like, like low, like, no, or, or just come to me next time. Be like, yeah. yo, like, you know what? Go ask your dad. That's something that you yeah. need. Like me, that's what I'm, I'm like, bro, do. like, we're not going to do that. Like he want to go to the movies. And I'm like, yo, that movie theater, like, it's too expensive. Like both of us, we're not going there, bro. Like, we Wait, you guys booked it, there. didn't you? Yeah, we booked it, but I, I booked it on discount. Okay. So I was like, bro, I was like, let's look up, let's look like a discount code. He was like, oh, you can do that? And I'm like, yeah, bro. But you know, like, it was stuff like That's that. That's good. That's yeah, good. Like, yeah, yeah, Stuff yeah. like that. I'm like, bro, like, come on. I was like. Because you and Taylor are more, don't like to spend. Oh, yeah. I don't, we, we don't, we only spend money on They nothing. don't like to spend money on nothing. nothing. So I he's like my nothing. person, like, to rally. Because, like, I know he don't want to spend. I ain't buying. No, we ain't got to go nowhere. <laughs> Every vacation we've ever been on. That's not completely true. Name name what name name one vacation. Name one vacation. You said you want to go to only... Dubai. You don't want to go to Dubai? You said, yeah, let's go there. How okay. Well, we gotta go. But we gotta but, go. We gotta but, go. But, but, we'll but, okay, but, we'll but, talk but, about before, this later. But no, no, before we wrap this up, how do how, how do all the Mirabal, vacations go? The how last do, one? How do all the vacations hold on, hold on, go? Hold on. How do they go? I plan what them. It, what I plan it, them. No, 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 no. What does it start with? Hey babe. Let's go here. And what do I say? I I don't care. But hold on, hold on. Listen, I was supposed to go on a girl's trip, but my friend couldn't come. And then what'd you say? You're like, looks like I got to go with you. That's not what I said. I was like, I said, I said, I said, who's going to go with you? And you was like, I don't have anybody to go with me. I was like, well, I guess like, I, I'm going to go with you. Because I already <laughs> so you knew. you wanted to go. It's okay to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you, I'm just messing with you. I'm right. glad you came, baby. Yeah. I'm glad you came. So we, we appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much for kicking with us. We got this piece introducing Choose Your Heart. Choose Your Heart. <laughs>